Hey, where are we? <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? Hey, pretty good. Good. Who are you? Steve Ballmer. And where are, are you? I'm Robert Scoble. I know that. <laughs> Thanks. We're well, in my office at Microsoft Corporation. You're in. We're in your office. This is my office. And uh, I heard there's an Xbox up here. Is that true? There is no Xbox. There's some suggestions from my son. <laughs> uh, Halo Three and Halo Two on the board, but that's about it. Yeah. Um, we might as well get right into it because we we only have a few minutes of your sure. time. Sure, you're famous for that developers, developers, developers speech, right? <laughs> Why are developers so uh, important in Microsoft? At the end of the day, the innovation at the soft in the software business and the IT business comes because somebody writes a great piece of code. Even in hardware, fact, fr frankly, most of the innovation these days comes because somebody writes a good piece of code, an important piece of code, a great piece of code. So all the solutions, whether we create them ourselves, whether they're created by our partners, ISVs, it all starts with developers, developers, developers. <laughs> now, um, I'm on the evangelism team here. Why, why do we have an evangelism team? Well, really helping developers understand what we've got available for them to use. Not just, frankly, in Windows, but in Office and our server products, what they can take advantage of, how they can exploit that, how they can save their time, how they can save their energy, how they can do, in some senses, better applications, applications that integrate better with other people's applications. You know, you got to communicate. And some of that's going to happen on the website, but some of it has to happen in face-to-face -face meetings. People here have to be listening, creating code samples. All of that we call... Evangelism. Yep. Um, what's your call to action to, for developers right now? Well, yeah, I think the, the, one of the key things people have to understand is the PC is an important part of the overall ecosystem that people are using. Yeah. It's intelligence at the edge of the Internet. And I think people got very excited appropriately about the Internet and HTML and browsers, but I think there's going to be two places of innovation for developers over the next few years. One's going to be taking advantage of the intelligence at the edge of the network, uh, the PC and other intelligent edge to mobile phones, other intelligent edge devices, and the other is going to be using web services and XML to glue things together, applications, services, across the internet, inside a data center, inside a developer's applications. Right. And between those two, two phenomena, I think there's plenty for developers to think about. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft has been a leader in transparency and using blogs and doing the Channel 9 thing. Um, what are your thoughts on the blogs? What, what, why did you allow blogging to happen here? I, in the world of developers, I'm not sure it would have mattered whether I wanted to blog blogging or not. But I think it's actually been a great way for uh, us to communicate to our customers and our customers is importantly to communicate to us. And you know, we trust our people to represent our company. That's what they're paid to do. Right. And if they don't want to be here, they wouldn't be here. So, in a sense, you don't run any more risk letting somebody express themselves in a blog than you do letting them go out and see a customer on their own anyway. It just touches more people. And hey, if people, you know, need to be trained or understand better, we can always do that. But I find it is just a great way to have customer communication. Yeah. All right, now that's for some tough questions. Right? Okay. <laughs> End of the softball. <laughs> um, on the blogs, there are those who say Microsoft doesn't innovate anymore. Uh, can you give us some examples of where you see innovation? I think we're doing a ton of innovative work. Uh, you know, if you take a look at the stuff we're doing right now with interactive television, I think it is super innovative. I think the tablet stuff's been a little slower to take off than we had hoped. I think it's super innovative stuff. Yeah. If you take a look at what we're doing right now, in the office world with our next generation, with this generation, the next generation of office products, the stuff we're doing with Live Communicator and the real-time stuff, I think it is very innovative, uh, very, very good, very, very innovative work. Take a look at what we're doing in Visual Studio and what we're doing in System Center and what we're doing around the DSI, the management initiative. I think it's very innovative work. If you take a look at what we've done in MSN Messenger, I think it's very innovative work. We got other things coming to the fore. You know, we got Longhorn and a bunch of very important Xbox 360. Yeah. <laughs> even before that, very innovative stuff. I do think that you know people miss. There was a big gap between the last major release of Windows and this one, and people kind of miss that. They want more frequent releases. I think we got that message. Uh, that's important. 
You know, but I look out in the world and I say, okay, who's doing the innovative stuff over the last few years? Did IBM out innovate us? Don't think so. Don't think they've done much in interesting at all. What about Oracle? Don't think they've done much in innovative at all. What about the open source guys? Yeah, the business model's interesting, but we haven't seen much in the way, really, of, of technical innovation. People cite Google. Google's done some interesting stuff. We've done some interesting stuff. Peace. There are going to be some other companies that also do innovative work. Yeah. Um, and you know, our job is to go out and do what we're going to do, which is to out innovate them going forward, which we will do, even in their in their prime domain of search. Right. Coming up with tough questions for you is pretty hard. If you were in my position, what tough questions would you be asking the CEO of Microsoft? I think developers have to have to ask the following basic questions of us. Number one, are you guys going to create opportunities, not just for me to write programs more simply, but are you going to create opportunities where my program somehow works with another guy's programs and one plus one is three? Windows has been that. You get to use multiple applications at the same time with some level of data interchange. I think the work that we're doing in Longhorn, the work that we're doing with uh, uh, the file system in Longhorn, the work we're doing with Avalon in Longhorn, all falls into that category. And I feel very, very good about that. I think you have to ask us, are, we, are you going to give us a way to uh, have one plus one be three with other applications in terms of the way they communicate and work out in the Internet? And we're working hard on strategies to, to uh, facilitate that you know, with MSN and some of the other things that we're doing. I think that's an important area. I think at the end of the day, developers, though, more than almost anything, want to know, are you guys going to win? Because the technical stuff is interesting, very interesting, very important. But people want to bet on platforms that win because platforms that win get more support, they get more management tools, they get more of everything. And I think our track record has shown a consistent track record of winning. And even in areas where people, like the Internet 10 years ago, where people thought we weren't going to win, we came back and win. And so I'd say to us, are you guys still committed to winning? Of which the answer, the obvious question is absolutely we are. And that that success of our platforms is success that benefits uh, our developers. To end it up, uh, since a lot of Microsoft employees watch Channel 9 too, what would you say to all the employees around the world you know, who work at Microsoft? I'd say about the same thing to our, to our customers, developer customers, that I would say to our employees. There's never been a better opportunity than today to make a real difference in the world. The next 10 years are going to be exciting and computing and information technology is the last 10. Don't be confused. Even though 10 years ago most people didn't have PCs, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't know what the Internet was, the next 10 are going to be every bit as good. Whether it's web services, whether it's intelligence at the end, whether it's service-based applications, whether it's uh, uh, next generation user interface, whether it's, it's mobility. The next 10 years are going to be very exciting, and the key is to set big, bold goals for yourself. Whether it's the skills that you develop individually, it's the projects that you work on with others and seek to go after, I think we've got to be able to be big and bold. I tell our people, let's be big and bold in our ambitions, and I tell the developers who use our platforms and tools, be big, be bold, be ambitious, and... Uh, Count on it. The future, the future is so bright. You gotta oh, wear I jeans. I totally agree. Yeah, <laughs> hey, uh, I wore jeans right in the CEO's office. <laughs> um, what do you want to be remembered as? Well, now you're asking. Now you're asking some deep, profound questions. <laughs> Mostly, I want to be remembered by my three sons as a great dad and a great husband. Uh, but when you get past that, I want to be, you know, kind of remembered as a guy who helped build a company that did great, innovative work that was able to continue to do great and innovative work long after its founding. The company's 30 years old. We started out as the beginner of this industry. We're about the only company that has not only survived but thrived for the whole period. And 30 years from now, when I'm long gone, I want this company to be still knocking out the innovative hits. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. thanks.